really enjoyed that. Well, it's good to have you tonight. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to the book of Third John, verse number 9. We'll talk about some of the people you're liable to meet in church. Third John, verse 9. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among you, received us not. Father, bless the book now. In thy name I pray. Yes. Amen. You all can be seated. Uh, you've all met Diotrephes. He's very prominent in a lot of places. Right. He, uh, he exercises his spiritual authority over people. And the truth of the matter is we have, we have some dictators at the church. And I've met a few of them down through the years. And uh, it's not a good experience. No. Uh, Christ is the head of the church, not the preacher. But Christ right. is. Amen. And we're simply, as they, old folks used to call it, an under-shepherd. And that's a good term. Yeah. Uh, that's all I am. But if, uh, if you've ever met a Diotrephes, just pass him off. Let him go. Uh, his yeah. own works will work him. It'll find him. And you'll reap what you sow. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 says this, And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Now, puffed up simply means pride, spiritual pride, yeah. taking position, you know, uh, clicks and what have you, and this and that. So you'll meet people in the church who, who they'll give you that plastic smile, but they really don't want you as part of their, part of their group. And uh, that's sad, but that's really sad because there are no super spiritual Christians. Never met one. I'm certainly not one. And uh, what you'll find is people who, uh, who understand sin and their relationship with the Lord. I was listening to a preacher the other day, and he was talking about how that he said, some of you uh, just come down here and you pray through and you pray through and you pray through and you pray through. He says, you need to get to the point to where you don't have to do that anymore. You need to get to the point where you have pure hands and pure heart and pure this and pure that. I thought to myself, are you talking about yourself? Yeah. You'll never get there, folks. No. That's called self-righteousness. Yeah. Just remember the old boy that beat his, smote his chest and wouldn't so much as lift up his yeah. head toward heaven said, God, be merciful yeah. to me, a sinner. Yeah. That's power in that kind of prayer. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17 says, Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you've us for an example, for many walk of whom I've told you often and now tell you even weeping, they're the enemies of the cross of Christ. Now watch this. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, yeah. and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Uh, another term for this would be what you'd call worldly believers. The apostle said in Romans chapter number 16, verse 17, I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you've learned, and avoid them. Yes. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. The church is supposed to be the pillar and ground of the truth. It's supposed to be the light of the world, and it's supposed to be the salt of the earth. In plain words, the church is supposed to be a... a um, uniting thing that holds people's souls together and gives them a light in this world that will lead them through the darkness. And the truth of the matter is, uh, when I was a boy, I wasn't a Christian. When I was 17 years old, went off in the military, I wasn't a Christian. I didn't get saved till 1973 when I was 27 years old, 27. But you see, this country did not get in the shape it's in tonight overnight. It didn't get there overnight. It got where it is tonight because Christians gave up their, their responsibility to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, and they voted their belly when they went to the polls. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. And they still are. Yet they're crying for revival. Doesn't that sound good? We like to have revival. Let me tell you how to have a revival. Get on your knees, ask God to forgive you for your, your God, which is your belly. And become active in what you can do for the cause of Christ. Amen. Somebody said, well, there's 50 million born-again believers in this country. You kidding? If you had 50 million 
real born-again Christians in America. Folks, you could put anybody in office you wanted to. You say, well, politics won't save me. I'll <laughs> tell you something right now. Say alone because you're reaping mm -hmm. what politics can do to you. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're reaping it. There's a point. I agree. There's a fine line that you can cross over when the pulpit becomes nothing in the world more than a political stage for one party or the other. I agree. With I understand that. Our number one message is Christ and him crucified. Yeah. But I'm also a citizen of this nation, and I read, and I watch what these politicians do. I certainly do. How many of you know who Mark Twain is? Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain, young man. He was quite a prolific writer. He says, politicians are like dirty diapers. They need to be changed. <laughs> I agree, Mr. Twain. <laughs> you are right. They do need to be changed. Yes, sir. I don't like a man up there in Washington, D.C. telling me how to do a job when he's never had one himself. I don't like that. He doesn't, he doesn't know anything about work. He doesn't know a thing about work. Work is a good thing. It's not a curse. Work gives your life some meaning, gives you somewhere to get up and go to, somewhere, to you, somewhere that, you, that, you, that you pour your soul into it. You learn a trade. You get an education. You do something with your life. To me, one of the greatest curses on a human being would be to lay, on, lay all day long, all week long, and do nothing. My, what a curse. Thank God that you can still move about and do something. So uh, their God is their belly. You say, is it too late, preacher? I mean, you think about tonight. The education of your children is important, don't you think? Yes, it is. Your children are your children. Yes. They don't belong to the government. They don't belong to Caesar. And watch when Caesar starts putting his hands on your children. And I'm talking about the educational establishment. Amen. We had a Christian school for five years, and I often prayed, Lord, give us more. We needed, we needed a gymnasium. We needed things like we had to carry our kids off to, uh, to a rec center for, they can, for them to play basketball. Never had a gym. Never had the, the facilities that a lot of the other churches did, and apparently the Lord didn't want us to continue with our school. But I'll tell you one thing. The five years those kids came to this school, they didn't miss a thing, buddy. They got an education. Do you know why? We put teachers in their classrooms that could teach. Degrees don't teach. No. Knowledge teaches. It takes a yeah. gift to be able to teach. And I found out a long time ago when we had the school that you can have a degree from UT and not be able to teach a lick. That's right. Found that out. Found it out the hard way. But I found it out anyway. We tried to do something about it a long time ago. And those kids that went through this school 40 years ago, some of them are out there teaching now. And they're working in professional this and that and so forth and so on. They got a good education. I just wish we'd had the facilities, prayed about it and prayed about it and prayed about it. But God never let it become a reality. So apparently he did not want us in that. But that was 40 years ago. Now, some of the church is beginning to catch on to the idea, well, maybe we ought to educate our kids ourselves. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you finally caught on. Yeah. I'm glad you finally see it. You see what the public school system is doing to your children. Yeah. They're teaching this critical race theory. Yeah. What an abomination to separate, turn people against each other over something neither side has any responsibility for. And yet that's what they're getting day in and day out. There's, a, there's, a, there's an agenda behind it. Philippians 1.12 says, But I would, you should understand, brethren, the things which happened to me have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all of the places. And many of the brethren of the Lord waxing confident by my bonds, good, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. The other in love, knowing that I'm set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Now this is a man. This is a humble man. This is a man. This is an apostle. What then? Notwithstanding, in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Say, preacher, the preacher I, I got saved under, wound up, run away from it, run off with another woman, 
and been drunk for the last 15 years. Am I saved, preacher? You're not saved because of the preacher. You're saved because of the Word. Yes. You're begotten by the Word. Yes. That's what you're begotten by, not the preacher. There's no telling what's liable to happen to the preacher. Right. Some of them just simply blow their brains out. Right. You see that happening. And you hear this suicide all the time. You see, when you get into this, what we're in here tonight, you walk a fine line because Satan's a spirit being. And if you'll remember when Christ was here, he came after him. He said, the prince of this world cometh. You see, this is dangerous ground, very dangerous. If you in your heart have a desire to serve the Lord and you want to you serve God, you want the truth, you're going to get the truth. And you're going to be able to serve the Lord. And God's going to bless you beyond measure. But if you're a hypocrite, you will be sifted like wheat and you will have a power come down against you that you never imagined. When a man lies drunk all the time, he doesn't, Satan doesn't bother him. <laughs> well, he's a waste. Satan comes after you if you try to live for the Lord. Paul said, whether in pretense and truth, Christ is preached. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 said, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I remember a man one time years ago, he's talking about another man, said, That's one of the most spiritual men I've ever known. Well, at the time, I didn't know anything. Then come find out later on, he was the worst case of incest and fornicating piece of uh, godless uh, talking, run up and down the church aisles and shouted and carrying his Bible with him. He was anything but spiritual. He was spiritual, all right, but he's full of the spirit of hell. You're going to meet people like that in church, folks. You're going to meet them. And so beware. Look out for it. He said, I could not speak into spiritual, but even as into babes. I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Yeah. Neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife, divisions, are ye not carnal, walk as men. Any Christian group of people that are living for the Lord and really have their heart and soul uh, joined to him, they're going to love each other. There's going to be a fellowship there. It will pull you together. You're always drawn to somebody who has the same spirit you do. And then as after a while, you begin to discern the difference in these spirits. And you'll find a wicked, godless demon masquerading as a spirit of light. And you find that. That happens. It said, Brethren, Galatians 6, 1, If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such in one the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Now, listen. Some folks shout, some folks cry, some folks don't shout, some folks don't cry. I'm not going to judge anybody on that. That's your personal business. And, but whether you do or don't has nothing to do with whether you're spiritual. No. That's just the way you are. Some folks, you know, people are different. That's all right. There's no problem with that whatsoever. But don't ever let anybody tell you that if you don't do what they do, no. that you're not spiritual. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A bunch. Amen. I hadn't been Amen. preaching. I, I, 1973, I got saved. In 76, I took this church. So it was been about 74, 75. Some people came up to me and said, so-and-so, a preacher. <clears throat> I said, yeah. Is he fiery? <laughs> what they should have said is, does he preach the Bible? Amen. Amen. All people aren't the same. Right. Some folks get worked up and turn cartwheels. That's all right. That's what they do. Fine. I'm not their judge. But some folks don't get all that worked up. I, I listen to preachers and uh, some of the older ones, and I listen to them that have wisdom. And I'm not one bit interested in if they can shout and how, how loud they shout. I want to know what they have to say, what God showed them in the Bible, what he showed them in the Bible. I was reading a thing a little while ago before I came to church, and some of these churches out here, one preacher in particular, he's not here in Knoxville, but he's here in the country, and they're trying to reach the millennial generation. They say the millennials, about 29% of them don't go to church. They don't have any use for Christ. It's nothing. You know, they don't care about religion. That's nearly 30% of the millennials. And so he's trying to reach them. He's trying to reach the millennials. He's trying to, and, he's, he, and, he's, and his church is on all the social media sites. You know, he's, he has a presence and all of this. And, and they're reaching some of them. <clears throat> he said, my first message, and my first message is this, keep it short, 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 
Keep it short. Because the millennials will not sit through an hour message or an hour and a half. You have to appeal directly to them. Because for one thing, the culture today has changed a lot. What do they call it when a kid has hyper, hyper, uh, uh, H, hyper attention deficit H, something like that? Yeah. Hyper attention deficit disorder, something like that. <laughs> you know, I'm sure they all had that when I went to school and never heard it. <laughs> Teachers stand up there and have a board. <laughs> this will take care of your attention. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy, preacher. Do you believe in spanking? Oh, yeah. I'll tell you one thing. Some of these murderers that have killed these kids up here in these schools, if they'd had a board laid to their posterior, it might have saved some lives. If the Bible says something is good for you, then the book's right, right? Yes, I'm not talking about child abuse. No, I'm not. No. And no, I'm not. But I am talking about he that says spare the rod and spoil the child. Amen. I shot my little brother with a BB gun one time. <laughs> we played cowboy and Indians back all the time back then. I hauled off, but in I went here. Bang! Boy, he yelled. He ran to my grandfather. That's he raised us. Ran to my grandfather, and there was a little red spot on him somewhere. I don't forget where it was. I wasn't trying to really hurt him. I just didn't really think about what I was doing. But I shot him. I admit to it. My grandfather got mad. Oh, he got mad. He went in the kitchen. He got a pot. He got a pot. A pot, uh -huh. and he came out in the front yard, and I saw that pot, and I took off. I did. I took off running as hard as I could get it. Now, here's what I did. I turned around, and you can believe this if you want to. He threw that pot, and the minute my head turned around, it got me right here, and I've still got the scar to prove it. Yes, sir. <laughs> that pot. That pot, I never shot my brother again. That's it, first and last time. Never shot him again. I got hit in the head with a pot. If this crowd today had known that would happen, they'd throw him in jail. Sorry, bunch of devils. They'd throw him in jail. He did that because he loved me. Didn't think any less from a grandfather. He just said, son, don't shoot your brother anymore. And I got the message loud and clear. And that's something. God guided that pot. I was as far away as, uh, as Debbie over there, or further. He hauls off and throws that thing, and there it goes. I turn around, bang. Otherwise, it would hit me in the back of the head. The Almighty said, son, don't shoot your brother anymore. So I got the message, and so it is. You learn things. You learn things. Yes, you do. Now, babes, say, so how do I know I'm a babe? Babes watch people. And we're all guilty of it. Sometimes we get, we, get, we get fed up, blown up, torn apart by watching people. People will destroy you. People will suck the very life out of your soul. And it's not that you don't love people and want to help people, but the thing is, if that's all you ever see in the ministry, you're dying. And if that's all your Christian life is about, is just coming in here and seeing other people, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Babes watch other people. Babes listen to the wrong people. A good measure to follow, and this is very important, see if they exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. That's the true mark yes. of a real spirit-filled Christian. Yes. They exalt him. That is so important, so important. When you're starting out in the faith, and some of you may not have been saved very long, and it's all new to you, the way it was with me, good night, man, didn't know which way to turn, all this stuff. And learning, 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 taking in, taking in, taking in. And I remember a case of a couple of people where I first got saved, and there was an issue going on. And I got caught right in the middle of it. And um, I'm kind of like Peter. We had a business meeting. How many of you know what a business meeting is for? It's for the devil to show up and work you over. That's what the business meeting is for. And you can be sure of this. If that business meeting is about money, you'll have five times as many people as you would otherwise. But this business meeting wasn't about money. It was about an issue. And I had a bunch of people talking to me, and they were talking to me, and they were talking to me, and they got me all worked up. And they said, well, I'd do this, or I'd say that. I'd do this, I'd say that. 
Hey, let's just get in there and let's let them understand what's been going. This is no good. This can't happen. We can't let this happen. No. Listening to all that. I hadn't been saved long, six months or whatever. So the business meeting, we had a meeting. Man, people came out of the woodwork. Yeah. I'm telling you, I had never missed a service in six months or maybe it had been a year. I don't remember how long. Not a one. I knew everybody that had been coming there. And I watched all these people come out of the woodwork. And they were coming against the pastor. The issue was about the pastor. The pastor was a good man. He was a good man. But here they come. I said, who in the devil are these people? And here they come. Where do you come from? And here they come. And I'm like Peter. I stood up and I said, who are you? I said, I've been here. I haven't missed a church service and so and so and so and so. What are you doing in here? All right. uh, we're members too. We came to throw this preacher out. Yeah. And I said, no, you ain't going to throw him out. <laughs> that was the Marine talking. Still hadn't matured a lot in the faith. I said, no, son. Uh -uh. No, you're not going to come in here out of the woodwork and do that. I got real mad. But you say, you, mean, you got mad and you're still saved? Yeah, you can get mad. You can, you can kick the doors open. You can throw your Bible in the floor. You can, you can just walk out to church and say, I'll never go back in there again. You can get mad at God and do all kinds of things. That's okay. Lord understands. He understands. He knows what life's like. And so I said, no, we're not going to do it. And that night they had their business meeting. And then I looked around at the bunch behind me. For some reason I wound up being in front of them. <laughs> and I looked at this bunch behind me, this bunch that had agged me on, you know, that oh, I'd say that I'd do that and this and that. And I looked behind me and I said to them, y'all got anything to say? <laughs> Amen. 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 I learned a lesson that night. <laughs> oh, boy, did I learn a lesson. These are the kind of people you'll meet in church. They'll get you all blown up and then they'll step away. And they'll let you take the, the heat for it. How many of you ever had seen anything like that happen? <laughs> you all have. <laughs> Isn't that something? All right, let me give you four things and I'll come to a close tonight. If you exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, you exalt the complete sacrifice for sin. Do you know why churches are dying in America? They're preaching the church. They're preaching the preacher. They're preaching the ministry. They're preaching this, they're preaching that, but they don't preach Christ. I firmly believe, I still believe with all of my heart that the Lord Jesus Christ, when he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Yeah. Pontius Pilate, was as, yeah. Pontius Pilate was as worldly as a man could be worldly. He was a Roman, uh, a Roman governor. And yet he said, I find no fault in this man. He examined him. So what should we do? We should present the reason we exist. To this world, we love the Lord Jesus Christ. Where this church is not about the ministry. You can, what is that? That's, that doesn't mean anything. This church is about Christ. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it is, too. It's about the Lord Jesus, all right? Number two, the exalted position at the right hand of the Father. You see, he made a complete sacrifice for sin. That gets rid of the Moonies. That gets rid of the New Age movement. That gets rid of all religions of this earth. There's just one way, one name, and salvation. The Lord Jesus Christ, that's it. That's all. That's who we preach. If you preach something else, I don't care what you call yourself, you're not a Christian. Christ and him crucified, yeah. and then exalted position at the right hand of the Father. Philippians 2, 8 said, God hath highly exalted him. Yeah. He's worthy of praise. He's yeah. worthy of our worship. Worthy. His name worthy. is above every name. Worthy. He's what matters, folks. The world is watching you. When they see the church grovel around, and, 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 and for some reason, they, a lot in the church feel like, well, if I can just identify with these people over here. No, don't identify with anybody. Identify with Christ. Because that's what they're searching for. They may not even know it, but the world is looking for him. The Bible said he's the desire of all the nations. The rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Fairest of 10,000 to my soul. He's the one that I get up for in the morning. He's the one that I pray to. I'll wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I'll find myself just begin bust out praying. Pray up a storm. 
And uh, I've found what works better for me is just start praying here and start praying there and start praying here, and then I just love to stop and start praying there. It just, for some reason, spontaneity is the kind of prayers that I pray to the Lord. And then I'll call, call off, crawl off in a closet, shut the door, I'll get down and I'll pray. But I don't have to be in there to pray. You talk to the Lord. Number three, the unique praise place of Christ as relates to God the Father. All right? We're not all sons of God. We're not all children of the Father. The Lord Jesus Christ is God's blessed Son. There is not another one like Him. He's the only one. There's no more. And I have been born again because He is my Lord, my Savior, and my God. I'm not a child, I'm not a child of the world. I'm not a child of this age. I belong to the Lord Jesus. And number four, the preaching of the cross versus the law. This is for the religious crowd running around. Oh, I believe in Christ. Oh, I believe in the new birth. Hallelujah. Believe the Bible. Yes, sir, buddy. I believe all of this. But you'll watch them. It'll always be the but. Yeah. They have to add some little something to it. Exactly. Something. They have to add it. And a lot of them, I've listened to them. i listen to everything, and I've listened to them. And sometimes they can get a good, you can get some good teaching from them, a good message from them, and, they, and, 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 uh, and they'll bring it out to you, but then they'll turn right around and say, you got to do this. you got to do that. No, you don't got to do anything Amen. but accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. That's the Savior. Yes. That's yes. Him. Yes. Him, personally, Him. Yes. He that hath the Son hath life. Yes. And he that hath not the Son hath not life. Well, I joined the Baptist. I'm your, so you're a Baptist. Fine. I'm Presbyterian. Okay. <laughs> I'm a Lutheran. Oh, okay. I'm a Catholic. I'm, 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 you know, I'm a Pentecostal. And whatever. Yep. Well, I'm not interested in what you are. Do you have the Son? Yeah, amen. Do you have him? Do you have him? <laughs> he that hath the Son. <laughs> you know what he said? He said, I'll never preach another word in his name. I'm done with him. <laughs> He did. That's what Jeremiah said. I'm finished with him. He did. He did. Yeah. Jeremiah said, ever since you started talking to me and I've been prophesying for you, he said, I haven't had anything but bad luck. That's what he said, to put it in contemporary terms. He said, good night. You're nothing like I thought you ought to be. What's going on here anyway? I'm done with you. Yeah, but he... <laughs> He said, his word was in my bones yeah. like a fire. Yeah. It's not easy. That's not that easy to walk away from the one you really know. No. Amen. Amen. No, it's not. No, no, no. There may be times you have a lapse of faith. You may even get mad at God. I, I, I read a letter today from a dear old soul, married 46 years, I think she said. Husband had, uh, had the pancreatic cancer. Six months later, he was gone. Talking about how much she loved him. He's on with the Lord now. And uh, I thought to myself, God bless your soul. She's poured her heart out to me in that email. And uh, I pray for her and pray for her and pray for her. I mean, if anybody had uh, some reason maybe to get up and walk out the door and turn their back on God and say it's enough, why, why should we go through that here? Folks, I get letters like that all the time, yeah. all the time. And yet they love him. She says, oh, I love him, and I'm going to see him, and I'm waiting for his coming, and I'm ready to go over and over and over again. For me to live is Christ, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Is that what we have in our heart tonight? The Lord Jesus Christ. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Well, some Jeremiah, or some uh, Moses, one of the prophets, he said, but who do you say that I am? And there you are. <laughs> who do you say he is who do you say before the New Testament was ever written before the Apostle Paul was ever saved before a word was ever written of a New Testament this commercial fisherman said you're the Christ the son of the living God no stronger statement can be made than that one blessed art thou Simon Son of Jonah, Bar Jonah, Simon Bar Jonah. Flesh and blood hath not revealed that to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. That's what we need tonight. 
Father, bless your word. I thank you, Lord. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to analyze the way everybody's saved. That's not the issue. The issue is, do they have the Son in their heart? Do they really believe? Are they real believers? And Father, I know what happened to me. I know what happened to me. It changed me completely. Now, Father, bless these dear folk and those that are watching tonight by the Internet and those that will watch this later on, 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 the, on the website. Bless your word. Bless your word. Bless your word to them through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed above all and forever. In his holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.